Season 1, Episode 2 of WAGS Atlanta, The Dating Game. So, let's get into it. So, Keisha has been staying at the townhouse with their daughter, um, Callie and everything, waiting for she, uh, she and CJ to get things worked back out. And CJ did agree to go to counseling and whatnot and what have you. And I'm glad that they did agree to go. He did have a conversation with all the other guys. And basically, he told them about the security cameras. And they talked to him about everything and about their love for each other. How long they've been together. And he's seeing things different. Let me tell you, it's important to have some married men in your group. Because if you had... If if it, he just had single men in his group, this whole conversation would have went a totally different way. So, having good people to have your back makes a difference between night and day. So after listening to them, he did decide to go to Keisha and talk to Keisha and tell her that he do want to work on it. And I like that when they went to therapy, the therapist told them they need to basically change their mindset. They need to start stop saying I mind and all of that and start saying we, us, and ours. All that makes a big difference in everything that they do. And that will help their relationship. So I'm really glad that they started doing that. So anyway, moving on. I do agree with Keisha. If he would have never cheated, she would have never had the issue. And she would have never been using that. It irritated me with the fact that he going on like he just simply hugged some Instagram thoughts. And he ain't never messed around. He failed to leave out all the stuff she told. She was saying about how he was um meeting women on the road and carrying women every away game and all that kind of stuff. He left that out and tried to play play us for stupid like he was always innocent and he do, did do no wrong and she didn't have any reason to uh, doubt him. Now, I don't approve of what she did. That's doing the most. If you got to do that to catch a man, then you need to leave him alone and move on because it's not that serious. Then something else, if he is doing something, he's not about to bring the thought box back to the house that he knows you got the key to that you're going in and out of every day. I don't feel like he was that stupid. He'd have been doing like he was doing before, carrying him out on the road where you weren't going to be able to show up. But your insecurities, it's going to push him away. And as a woman that is married and a woman that has been scorned, I'm going to be honest with you. If you make the choice to stay with a person after they have after they have cheated on you, you got to let, let it go. You can't talk about it every day all the time because it's going to push him away. I know. I've been through it and, and I've lived it. If he's doing right and you keep accusing him of doing wrong, it's going to put strain on the relationship and he's going to feel like, oh, then I might as well keep doing wrong. If I'm going to keep being accused about it all day, every day, if I got to keep hearing about it, then what am I doing, you know, trying to do right for somebody that's not appreciated? So you're going to have to let it go. L-I-G it and leave it alone, Keisha. And then you keep going on about this ring. And I understand what you're saying. Everybody in the house, Callie and CJ got the like, same last name. You want the same last name too. And it, and, and it doesn't help that Nashe just keeps poking you and being mean to you and making fun of you. You really need, you know, it would be good to wave that ring in her face. It would be nice, but you're going about it the wrong way. If you want to get the ring, chill out. And you're going to get the ring. Go on. Handle your business. As long as he handles his and he's not messing around, you got to move on. Go on. Live it. And I think it's going to be all right. But for him, how he showed up at this whole uh, event, when he tried to shade you at the event, I didn't appreciate that. And tried to... Uh, ask you a question did you really try to trap me that really irritated me because you already know that Nishada tried to claim this old lame shit that you tried to trap that, that you tried to trap him Let, let's understand something it wasn't like you would all had only been with him a year y'all been together five years and the little girl ain't before but like two so five years out of two it's obvious that you didn't try to trap him so that was just rude altogether for him to say that he was a laying down willing partner. That's always obvious. But for Nashay to keep running her dog on mouth, 
who made her high and mighty girl by you sitting up here wanting a doggone nanny for some kids you can see about yourself because your little career you want to do some home interior decorating the place always empty when the cameras is there if you got it going on like that you need to do like your mama said get you an organized that's what us real women do i got my own business and i'm not talking about just youtube because right now, for me, YouTube, I'm not making a buck from YouTube. Not even so much as one cent from YouTube. So YouTube is not a career for me. It's a hobby. But I got a calendar for my hobby and my career. So you better do like us regular mothers and get you a, a, a planner. I just bought a new one for this year, Lamb. Right over there, I already done started writing it, and I ain't even got the doggone paper off of it yet. It's just to the point where I can old mom get the already sketches. Get you one. It'll work. So anyway, they um the shade and Keisha did discuss the shade being thrown and the shade talking out the side of her neck. Talking about nobody accidentally gets pregnant in um 2016 or whatever i don't i didn't hear them say necessarily that it was just an accident well she got pregnant they was having sex un unprotected it don't mean she tried to trap him they was doing what they was doing and it was good and it happened and wh why you so worried about it okay and then, then you're going to try to change them and say, well, what i'm saying is i don't believe people should be getting uh, having kids out of where like bitch bye I don't know why you trying to be so high-minded and hoity-toity because 98% of the people you know got babies out of wedlock. So pull that cob out your ass and start trying to act like you don't know because we really over it. It was just, just so lame to me. But anyway, <clears throat> all this, all that came about because y'all know Kiara went back and told Keisha everything. But anyway, so that's that was this is an episode two because I'm just gonna go on and cover two episodes right now to catch it up because yeah I ain't no need, needing to record two separate ones so anyway they showed JJ and Kaylin and they was all crying in their tears because his he done jacked up his little um career she running around playing ping pong ball with him trying to keep him occupied find him something to do girl that ain't gonna work but now that he at home she decided to go and try to pursue her little career in hosting and i think she'll be a great hostess because she was a pageant queen she's beautiful and that is something that a lot of pageant queens do and that they're good at but i don't want to feel like she got to keep running to babysit him girl he a grown man he don't need you to babysit him and i feel like you think you just need to hold his hand he gonna he gonna bounce back he gonna find something to do and i feel like he'll find a great career and he'll be just fine you just gonna have to leave him alone and let him go i want to do what he need to do he don't make you no bad wife or nothing like that but anyway, so let's see. Who else do we need to talk about? Something else. Uh, when uh, Keisha and Nashay was arguing, Nashay going to say she got treated differently uh, when she was a girlfriend and she wasn't invited to charity events and certain games and stuff. <laughs> hey, Keisha said, I did. <laughs> I think the Shay wasn't invited because she was just a pure bitch and she was snooty or what have you and they just didn't like her. And I think it's how she came across that they wasn't inviting her. I think that's what the issue was. And so or either that or Andre just wasn't just wasn't inviting her like that. Maybe he wasn't he didn't he wasn't feeling her to invite her just yet. Maybe she wasn't the main woman just yet as the girlfriend. Maybe it was more than one girlfriend. But you can't be mean being mean to Keisha and following Keisha because Keisha be getting invited to everything so you feel like because Keisha was getting invited to everything and she getting all these perks you trying to uh, demote her down and put her in a girlfriend's place girl you not the queen of the other wives girl no you this not um what's the show that used to come on with Melanie and, and, and Dar you not you not over the um over the wives it's not the sunflowers you you not over them you can't be demoting and putting people in their place. If she get invited, you, you, she gets invited. You ain't over it. So, just L-I-G it, girl, because you full of it. But I, and then I feel like I, I'm proud of Keisha for being mature. Because I feel like 
She she really was sitting there grinding her teeth and biting inside her gum, trying not to jump over that table like she comes straight from love and hip hop and jab slap and beat down uh in the shade. But I do feel like a, a right hook to the to the eye gonna be coming because she, Nache keep pushing and she want Keisha to come out of character so she can say Keisha ghetto and, and that she uh you know, don't belong in the group. And I feel that's what like that's what she keep trying to push and do. <clears throat> but I hope she don't fall for it. Y'all, when Harry pulled up to Ariel uh place, Ariel, how slow are you? Your brother in law is tired of hearing his teammates talk about passing you around that you ain't nothing but a good time and you a whore. That's what he trying to tell you. He tried to tell you in a nice way and and some some women so caught up in they self and they so naive that they can't hear what you trying to say. They can't read. They can't read between the lines. Let me get, can I get through? They can't read between the lines. Girl, they think you a whole thought. A whole piece of thought. They they pass you around. They all been with you. They using you, and they thinking you just out for the game. You ain't gonna never find no husband at this rate because right now you just a fresh piece of booty, and they all about to share you. He done he hearing about it in the locker room. He probably basically like a little laughing side, and he probably he probably thinking, "Hair your sister in law. When can I get a piece of that?" That's what he don't want to hear. He tired of hearing it. That's why he coming to you and talking to you about it because it ain't cool with him and he don't like what you're doing to his reputation or your reputation or his wife's reputation. He have to close your legs, sit down and shut your damn mouth. Listen to what he trying to tell you. Don't keep talking about, well, no, it's not like that. No, it is like that. Shut up. Then here you are, you want to go out on a double date with this other dude, which is named Ray, which is the basketball player. And then your sister don't want you in that life. <coughs> and I understand taking her advice is like the pot calling the, the kettle black. Because here she is, she dating a, a ball player and she don't want you to date one. And I feel like she don't want you to date one because she know how it is in the life and in, <coughs> in that career. It's hurtful. It's hard. They get cheated on. They go through stuff because she ain't yet said her story about what she, what heartache and pain she done endured. And I'm sure she done endured some. And she's trying to stop her sister from enduring some. That's why she don't want you to date a ball player. She just wants you to find a nice, successful man. Not a ball player, but one that does have something going for himself. Settle down and be a regular wife. She don't want you to live that life because she know how it is. You know. But you see her having it like that and got it like that. So that's what you want too. But oh well, it is what it is. So anyway, let's see what else we got going on. Anybody notice that Kiara and Aria look like twins? They really look a lot alike. Then they had a double date. It was Nache and Andre and um jj and kayla and they went to some bag cages number one who the hell go to bag cages in some heels you could honey even if it was for the you could have done better than that girl you could have put on because you was at home in some adidas so why you can wear adidas to the bag cage kayla you could have done better than that girl come on now I was a little disappointed in that you you could at least try and get to record a good little scene and just played it off and just try to bond with your man on that level. You over there trying to cater to him. You could at least try to bond to him just then. And then Kiara trying to help Ariel find the outfit for the date. I hope she finds something that don't look hoish. We don't want her to go out looking like Hope look when she went out. But anyway, the double date to me looked good. They drilled the heck out of dude like Todd and Candy did. Then they had this other little event. The event, I told y'all, CJ was trying to shake um, Keisha. Y'all know Nache had to make this big interest. And that doggone Keisha goes, and <laughs> say, she trying to come in like she all frozen. And she really did. And she looked pretty, and, and and it was like a wow factor to it, but she really was doing the most. And um, 
CJ was trying to really shade Keisha, but at the same time, you can tell he missed Keisha. He wanted to scoop up by her booty and kiss in her mouth, but you know, he was trying to still be nice at her. That was the event he was at when I told y'all he was trying to ask her, did she set him up, all that kind of stuff. She was trying to really talk to him about it, and he was trying to be a butthole about it. And I thought to myself, kick this ninja in his nuts, because he really trying to be a butthole after he cheated that made you be in serious. Okay, CJ, let me tell you something. Let me sit up for this, because I want you to hear me loud and clear, CJ. CJ, for every action, there's a reaction. If you didn't want this type of reaction for her, then you shouldn't have reacted by cheating. It is what it is. If you didn't want to hear about it, hear her talking about it, and didn't want her doing the things that she's doing, you should have never cheated. You created this monster. Now it's on you to fix it. So don't be mad at her talking out of the side of your neck, being rude and mean to her because you did what you did. You made your bed. Now, if you want to be a man, man up, own it, and not fix the situation. That's what a real man does. How do I know? Because I'm married to one, and he owned up to it, and he fixed the situation, and we're great. We've been together 24 years. So, yeah, take notes. Moving on. <laughs> so, anyway... <clears throat> That will be well, however she planned it to. I guess she wanted or whatever. That pretty much well wraps up the majority of episode two. There's not that much going on in episode three other than <clears throat> uh, the nanny situation. Ain't nobody studying because it wasn't even about that serious. Um, Kaylin wanting to host. Keisha and CJ missed each other. They went to therapy. They, degree, they agreed to work it out. We already covered all of that stuff. Stuff. Nache still don't need no nanny. She need an organizer. We discovered all that stuff. Honey, they went to New Orleans. That that's the best thing that happened in this episode. Kayla done went out. She buying all kind of stuff like hell. She going fly fishing. They got waders and everything. <laughs> I don't know what she needed a vest for. She just wanted to go blow some money. Your man not working. Don't be blowing no money. Anyway. They stayed at the same place that they stayed at at, at Married to Medicine. They stayed in the uh, Heaven and Lucy's, Lu Lucifer, uh, Lucifer Suites and everything. They went on the same swamp ride and everything. Fed the same alligators and hogs. Well, the hogs came out this time. They wouldn't come out and see uh, Dr. Simone. Them. They was probably back there asleep because they ate all the corn from the last ride. But then they went to see the voodoo priestess that Simone, Dr. Simone wanted to carry Dr. Heaven to to have her all fired up and mad and rant, running around, ranting and raving. So they went to see this lady. She threw the bones out on the table and read them for them. So basically the lady was right about all the ladies and what have you and what not. So she told them about themselves and she told Keisha the voodoo lady told Keisha, the more you badger someone, it's wasting time when, when you could be getting closer instead of pushing them further away. That's what the voodoo lady told Keisha. But this is what Keisha heard in her head. In her head, she heard, she heard she wasting time waiting on CJ to change. And that's not... <clears throat> Um, that she waiting her own, she, she heard she wasting time waiting on CJ to change because he ain't done much to change. That ain't what the voodoo lady told you, heifer. That's what's wrong with you, Keisha. You're going to run that man away. You already done got shoved at the door. You ain't but one more boot from being completely gone for real before he be trying to get custody of this child raised with another woman. You better damn take heed. To this comment, I hope you see this video because, girl, you need a child. <laughs> so, anyway, what else does Keisha crazy ass do? We got in the shade. We talked about her, her little pre pre premier design decorating or what have you. Then they was out house shopping. And, and like her husband said, she got to try to have the grandest, biggest everything. The biggest house. the biggest. Then they went and looked at that house. I didn't like that house that you got to walk across that walkway to get into. Girl, you been a slip and fell and, and plummeted to your death when it's done snowed outside. It's done rain. It was too much. Don't nobody like all that. Then, uh, like I said, she's going on about the nanny thing. Another bill, more money for somebody else to have to pay. Now, like I, I was talking about 
after the nanny got there, Andre realized he liked having the nanny there because it was quiet and they could actually sit down and have a drink of wine. The first thing he going to say, now that they got a nanny, he can get more ass. But honey, you ain't about to have more sex because she finna be gone more. She got that nanny so she could be in the streets living it up, trying to be bougie and flashing in people's uh, face. She going to lie to you and tell you so she can run this design her little design company. She ain't going to be at that design company. She going to be out in the street schmoozing with people trying to get into knowing into these, all these groups and all of that. Cause all the other, like the riches, the riches of rich, biggest of biggest have nannies. Honey, that's what she trying to do. Don't, don't let, let your wife play you child. But anyway, that's pretty much well about all I can't think of nothing else that I I think I uncovered both both episodes. Um, the nanny she had was Miss Hattie. He had the nerve to say Miss Hattie reminded him of the shade mama. They showed the shade mama. The shade mama not about to try to be sitting at home with no kids. She used to be a baller wife herself. She's still living the life technically. Pretty much, she not finna be sitting at home being the shade nanny. And then he didn't want her there anyway because he didn't want her in his business. Well, Miss Shay Mama and his business. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't want to live with two 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 Nishays either. To be honest, honey, because the shade too much for me. But anyway, Miss Hattie was cool. I like Miss Hattie. She wasn't no Miss Renee like on Married to Medicines, honey. She need to uh give Miss Renee some lessons on how to be a nanny, cause so she can get paid. But anyway, I like how uh un um un. Andre was like, you know what? I wasn't even for this, but you growing on me. I think I like this after all. And he was straight up and forward. I like men that be honest like that, be straight up and forward. And, um, you know. I, let's see, we talked about CJ, and I like that CJ manned up and th uh, and went to her on some grown, uh, I, and I think I mentioned that, that CJ manned up and went to Keisha on some grown man stuff and told him things for him would be much better if he heard if they moved back in the house because it's been lonely up in that big old house. No, no kid laughing and giggling, no woman to come home through and all that. And that was good. So that was all my review for this. This covered, um... Also covered episode three of of um Wags Atlanta Bellas in the Bayou. It covered that one too because it, I didn't have nothing to talk about where it needed its own video. It only been like two minutes long, so yeah. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next. Video.